Welcome to another edition of Pepe Villeta's No Bullshit Political Forecast. Tomorrow is Super Tuesday, the second biggest day of the election year. And the week leading up to it has been nothing short of a circus. Since our last show, the Democrats have had caucuses in Nevada and South Carolina, and Hillary won them both by a ridiculous landslide. <laughs> Tomorrow isn't looking so great for Bernie either with pundits predicting a major win for Hillary on Super Tuesday and the overwhelming favorite for the Democratic nomination. Looks now like it's the Sanders campaign that's starting to feel the burn. Esto no pasa en Cuba. Uh-uh. Hi! So here's the updated official odds board for the Democrats Super Tuesday. Hillary is easy money at 1 to 13. No surprises there. And at 12 to 1, Bernie Sanders has a better chance of catching Zika tomorrow than he does winning the Democratic seat. Mm-hmm. Now, on to the GOP. Just when you thought things couldn't get any stranger in the Republican primary, last week sneaks up on you and kicks you right in the pussy. Mm -hmm. It all started when Ben Carson, in his infinite wisdom, alluded to the idea that he would be the first black president. When asked to elaborate on the idea, Carson said, Obama no es negro na! Yo soy negro de verdad! That Obama grew up white in Indonesia and did not have the experience of growing up black in America, like he did. Yeah! yeah. Carson went on to say that for Obama to claim that he identifies with the black experience in America is a bit of a stretch. De binga. Later in the week, the 10th GOP debate was held in Houston, Texas, and it proved to be el de pinga del año. Mm -hmm. Maquito Rubio chugged four coladas and went straight for the throat of Donald Trump. If you didn't get a chance to see it, here's a quick highlight of the carnage. Later in the debate, Cruz joined in the attacks and it got ugly. A friend of mine said that two Cubans haven't taken out a white guy like that since Tony and Manny killed Frank, and it looks like it worked. Rubio's performance dominated the news cycle all weekend. He further reinvigorated his campaign with speeches calling Donald Trump a con man and a petty swindler and exposing shocking details about the Republican frontrunner's shady business practices, including a pending case filed against Trump by the New York Attorney General for scamming millions from students that enrolled in the now defunct Trump University. Trump didn't go down without a fight, though. In an attempt to steal back the crucial weekend news cycle, Trump held a press conference where he announced a surprise endorsement to the world. He's been a spectacular governor, and I would like to introduce him because he's going to say something that I think you'll find very, very interesting. Thank you. <laughs> Many are speculating that Trump struck a major deal with Christie for his endorsement because Trump lacks the concrete policy ammunition to retaliate against Rubio's attacks. The price to make Christie Trump's bitch is still unknown, but pundits are speculating that it could be anything from a vice presidency to a Supreme Court nomination. And if that isn't enough, just yesterday Trump dominated the headlines again when during an interview with CNN, he refused to renounce the KKK support of his campaign. KKK Grand Wizard David Duke, who recently said that voting against you at this point would be treason to your heritage. Will you unequivocally condemn David Duke and say that you don't want his vote or that of other white supremacists in this election? Well, I have to look at the group. I mean, I don't know what group you're talking about. You wouldn't want me to condemn a group that I know nothing about. I'd have to look. If you would send me a list of the groups, I will do research on them. And certainly I would disavow if I thought there was something wrong. The but you Ku may Klux have Klan? groups in there that are totally fine and it would be very unfair. So give me a list of the groups and I'll let you know. Okay. I mean, I'm just talking about David Duke and the Ku Klux Klan here, but... I don't know, any, honestly, I don't know David Duke. I don't believe I've ever met him. I'm pretty sure I didn't meet him, and I just don't know anything about him. So here's the updated official odds board for the GOP Super Tuesday. Trump's odds slip heavily from last week, but he's still clinging to the lead at 1-4. to four. And right at his heels is Marquito Rubio as a 3-1 to one underdog. As for Cruz, his odds are paying out at 40-1, to one, which basically means you're more likely to get abducted by aliens than Ted Cruz is to win tomorrow's nomination. Bueno. Ahí lo tiene. Send me your bets or predictions on Twitter to at Pepe Billete. And remember, scared money don't make no money, baby. See you next time on Pepe Billete's No Bullshit Political Forecast. Ah,
Vaya para la pinga, ven acá a tocarme los huevos.